is the Twins' current bullpen good enough? Is it have enough floor? Does it have enough ceiling? Or did they need more before opening day? It's an important question, and it's coming up on today's episode of Lockdown Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Thursday, February 2nd, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Lockdown. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. Again, this is Nash Walker. Four off seasons, three seasons hosting a daily podcast on the Minnesota Twins. Right now, before pitchers and catchers report, we're at three days a week, but we will go back to five days a week here uh, starting the week of February 13th, I think, or February 14th when pitchers and catchers do report. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have some news, and you may have seen on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at NashWalker9. While you're here, please like, subscribe, comment. I have gotten a job in Reno with the AAA affiliate of the Diamondbacks, the Aces. I will be Doing commun- I'm be the communications coordinator, and I'm also going to be a part of the broadcast team. I'll be making content for the Aces. Huge step for me. I- I'm super excited about this, and I- I've been waiting for an opportunity, and I'm really grateful for it. And I will be moving out there in three weeks. And unfortunately, with that, someone else will be taking over Lockdown Twins starting March 1st. And it sucks, but... It is what it is, and I've loved doing this show. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for all the time you've put in listening to me, making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. Over 850 episodes since I was 19 years old I've been doing this. I love it, and I'm so grateful for you. I'm going to finish through February, so I will be here through February. ton of stuff. Spring training storylines. It's the most fascinating twin spring training, I think, in a long time. I'll be here for most of it. I don't know who's going to be the next host. But I'm sure uh, they will be open about who that's going to be from Locked On. If not, you'll hear from them, I think, starting early March. I don't know if they have someone in line yet. But it's been an absolute pleasure. And today, I'm asking the question, is the Twins bullpen good enough on paper right now to compete, to win, to win the American League Central, to compete in the playoffs? Is the bullpen good enough now? Let's take a dual look at this. I think this is the best way to do it because bullpens and relievers are so volatile. I think the best way to look at it is from both angles. I try to do that on the show. I've tried to do that on the show for for three and a half, three and a half years now, but we're going to look at it from both angles. So flat, flat out, is the Twins bullpen good enough? Is it good enough to succeed and good enough to accomplish the goals they want to accomplish this year? Here's why the answer would be yes. We're going to look at the yes side. Yoan Duran is a freak. He's one of the best relievers in baseball. He had a 186 ERA as a rookie, 33% strikeout rate. And over his last 37 outings, Yoan Duran had a 129 ERA with a 214 fielding independent pitching and a 548 opponent's OPS in mostly the highest leverage parts of the game for the Twins. Yoan Duran is incredible. He's a freak. He is the man, the weapon, you have him. Jorge Lopez last year had a 254 ERA with Baltimore and with the Twins. Full season, amazing stuff, 98 to 100 with the sinker. Devastating all-star closer last year. Jorge Lopez is a back of the back of the bullpen arm for the Twins, and he's going to pair up with Juan Duran and be tough, tough as nails, going to bounce back, gets comfortable after an offseason, a full offseason of being a twin, not just this quick turnaround at the trade deadline. He's going to be a beast. That's part of this argument for yes. Griffin Jacks, great rookie year, 317, fielding independent pitching. He's only going to get better. He's been at driveline, folks. He's throwing 100 at driveline. He's going to take another step forward in 2023. Caleb Theobar, in his last 31 outings of 2022, had a 127 ERA and a FIP at 135, and it wasn't a mirage. 35% strikeout rate for Caleb Thielbar 
over his last 31 outings. He was one of the best relievers in baseball down the stretch in 2022. Jorge Alcala is back. At one point, Jorge Alcala was the Twins' best young relief prospect, transferred over to being a reliever. 97 to 100 with the fastball. He's back. His upside is back, and he's joining the Twins' bullpen. Giovanni Moran, lowest Twins reliever FIP. And feeling independent pitching, for a reminder, takes away everything a pitcher can't control. So it's home runs, strikeouts, and walks. So things pitchers can mostly control. Giovanni Moran, lowest FIP by a Twins reliever, minimum 40 innings since Joe Nathan in 2006. He's going to be a part of this bullpen. Emilio Pagan, it's hard to be worse. But I will say, statistically, 216 ERA, a fit below three in his last 13 outings. Might have figured something out with that curveball. Might have finally put it all together at the end of the year, and he's going to carry that over into 2023. Trevor McGill throws complete gas, one of the hardest throwers in Major League Baseball and certainly in the Twins bullpen. And he had a 329 feeling independent pitching last year for the Twins and kind of a breakout relief season for his standards given the track record before 2022. So that's why this is going to work. Look at all that. Look at all the Twins have to work with here. No, they don't need another reliever. They got arms on arms. They have high upside. They have high floors. They have one of the best relievers in baseball in Joan Duran. They have an all-star closer in Jorge Lopez. They have good young building blocks with Griffin Jackson, Giovanni Moran, and Caleb Theobar's there is the, one of the best lefty relievers in the league last year down the stretch. They got it working, right? They got it working. After this word from FanDuel, maybe why they should add another reliever. FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of Lockdown. We're so excited to have them as a new partner because they're the number one sportsbook in America. It's FanDuel, and if you're new to FanDuel, it's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. If you think the Twins are going to get more than 84 and a half wins, you can go bet it at FanDuel. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to claim your no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thanks again for making Locked On Twins your first listen every single day. Locked On MLB Prospects, hosted by Lindsey Crosby. He's a prospect encyclopedia. He's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Those are the reasons the Twins bullpen may not need an addition or two or three. Here are some reasons why they might. The other side of the coin, it always pains me to get pessimistic, but here's the other side. No, they're not good enough because John, John Duran was just a rookie. He was a rookie and there's too much pressure on him. There's too much pressure on his elbow. He has a history of elbow problems. If he goes down, the Twins are in trouble. Jorge Lopez, not very good with the Twins last year. 437 ERA and before 2022, really didn't have a track record of success in the big leagues. Griffin Jacks, just a first-year reliever in 2022. Has he hit his ceiling? Was that his ceiling? Because even though Griffin Jacks had a nice rookie year, the Twins' bullpen was still abysmal in the first half, even with his breakout. Was that his ceiling? Could it be? Caleb Thielbar is 36 years old. 36-year-old reliever. Relievers are volatile. You don't really know. Jorge Alcala coming back from elbow surgery. He's coming back from elbow surgery. And before the elbow surgery, he was awesome down the stretch in 2021. But overall, kind of underwhelming. His numbers underwhelming as a bullpen arm for the Twins. Giovanni Moran, can he throw strikes? He really didn't at AAA in 2022. He was awesome for the Twins. But for the Saints, like complete opposite. So... Something might be going on there. Emilio Pagan, uh, really no, there's no comment on Emilio Pagan. Basically what you saw last year, could it happen again, potentially? And then Trevor McGill also does not have a track record. The caveat with a bullpen is you can always have more. You can always add more relievers. You can never have enough pitching. And that's just a really negative way to look at this bullpen. But I think for people who are concerned about it, and watched last year. They watched what played out last year. It's understandable. Like when you go down the list, 
everybody's kind of got a question mark in some ways. And maybe that's true of every reliever in baseball, even the best have some question marks, you know, I've had injury histories, have had histories of not having the best come in and you wonder, is it going to come back? That's the nature of a bullpen. Last year, before the Twins traded Taylor Rogers, I said, hey, this bullpen's going to be fine. I think this bullpen will be fine. They traded Taylor Rogers. I could not have been more wrong about that. Tyler Duffy was abysmal. Emilio Pagan was abysmal. It didn't work. It just didn't work. And luckily, they had two rookies in John Duran and a first-year reliever in Griffin Jacks who picked up so much of the slack and kept them afloat for much of the season. And then Caleb Theobar came on in the second half, but the team kind of crumbled around him. It was not a good bullpen. I don't have to tell you that. If you watch the Twins, if you heard about the Twins, I remember tweeting at one point, the Twins bullpen is the worst blockbuster, the best horror movie of 2022, summer of 2022, blockbuster horror movie, Twins bullpen. That's how bad it was. And somehow they were still in it in September, given that bullpen. So when I frame it that way, I think I think their bullpen has legitimate upside. I could see this bullpen being very, very good. I could see Joan Duran just being himself. Jorge Lopez bouncing back and being who he was for a full season, which is like a 250 ERA, going to close games, going to pitch in the eighth inning. He's tough. He's stingy like he was last year, the full sample of last year. I think Griffin Jacks is absolutely going to take another step forward. I'm convinced of that. He was the hardest to get negative about because I'm just such a believer in his 2023 season here. Caleb Theobar, left-handed, you know, hard to get much better down the stretch last year. If he continues that and carries that into 2023, he's a relief ace, legitimately a relief ace. Jorge Alcala is kind of a luxury item as a high upside right-handed arm who throws gas. You know, Giovanni Moran was great for the Twins last year. Emilio Pagan finished strong, and he's not going to be in as high of leverage situations. And then Trevor McGill has the stuff to get it done as a middle reliever. And the Twins overall, the reason I I feel more warm about this bullpen is because the difference this year than in prior years is you're going into the season, and maybe this won't be the complete group, but Derek Falvey did have a quote with Phil Phil Miller that it's not a focus. I think that was the quote. Bullpen's not a focus right now. If they did go into the season with this group, makes me feel a little bit warm because they have more stuff in this bullpen than they've had in the history of the Twins. And in baseball, there's more stuff in every bullpen than there's ever been in the history of baseball. But for the Twins specifically, they have some dudes. I mean, Joan Duran is the hardest thrower in Major League Baseball. Highest average four-seam velocity last year. Jorge Lopez... 98 to 100 with the sinker. Griffin Jacks can hump it up there. He's touching 100 at driveline this offseason. Caleb Theobar, not a hard thrower. Jorge Alcala is 97 to 100 when he's healthy. Giovanni Moran is kind of low to mid-90s. Emilio Pagan can get it up there, 96, 97. And then Trevor McGill throws 100 as well. They got stuff back there. And stuff doesn't mean results, always. It doesn't always lead to outs. It doesn't always lead to strikeouts. I mean, I think Trevor McGill is a decent example of that because he throws it middle middle too often his command is okay sometimes his control is middle middle it's it's a problem and it prevents him from getting whiffs and and increases hard contact increases numbers for hitters and stuff doesn't equal results for mcgill it hasn't really in his career but you bet on the stuff and i think for the twins bullpen overall if you want to feel good about it i feel warm i feel warm about the twins bullpen it's stuff related. It is stuff related. And I've said it this off season as well. When you have Jalon Duran, the worst possible thing that can happen is what happened in the first half of 2022. It was everybody around him. It was Duran and, and Jax. They were performing and Jax as a first year reliever, like they weren't putting him in high leverage spots right out of the gate. Same with Duran with his elbow in 2021. They were worried. They didn't want to use him on back-to-back days. But when you have Joan Duran, the worst possible scenario is what happened last year in the first half. Nobody produces around him in the late innings. Pagan, Duffy, you're missing Rodgers. They traded Rodgers, and he ends up kind of blowing up for San Diego. But they had nobody around Duran in the late innings because Jax, they needed Jax early because starts were short, and they would use Jax in the fifth, sixth, or seventh. 
and then they had to save Duran and everybody before Duran either blew up or they used Duran in the highest leverage and everybody after him blew up, whether it was Pagan or Duffy or a whole host of arms, they tried out, you know, Jarrell Cotton, they tried in that spot. I remember Andres Jimenez hit a home run. I can't even think of his name. Was it Tyler Thornburg? I, I can't even think of who the twins were trotting out there at times in the late innings. It was harsh. That's the worst it can go, in my opinion. That's the worst it can go. How could it go worse? If you have a, a healthy Joan Duran, it can't possibly be worse. And I think because the Twins learned who he is and saw how good he can be, it will help them in 2023. Because he was an unknown. Like You knew his stuff was great. I came on in spring training, and I said he should make the opening day roster. And he did. And it, he was incredible. And he was a rookie relief ace for the twins in the highest leverage spots. Now they know that. So they've learned that about him. And I think they're going to use him really in a different way. I think, yes, he will pitch in, in high leverage spots. He's going to continue to pitch in the highest leverage spots, but I think he's going to pitch more often. I think they're going to give him back to back days. I think he will pitch the ninth inning more often because last year in the first half, and you could argue he should have been closing games all year. In the first half, they didn't really know. They, they, they didn't know. So he was pitching, and they didn't have a reliable secondary reliever. So he's pitching in the highest leverage spots, and you had to you know, use him sparingly because of his elbow. And then the second half, they had Lopez for a chunk of the second half, and he was their closer. He was an all-star closer for Baltimore. So then that freed up Duran to bounce around the late innings. Now you saw Lopez struggled, and Duran's clearly your best reliever. I think he's going to pitch in the ninth inning more. I think he will be used differently, not completely differently. He's still going to pitch in high leverage spots. I think more of them will be in the ninth inning. Sometimes the game flow just dictates that. I think he's going to. I think he's going to earn more of the save statistic for whatever you think that's worth in 2023, because I think they have more depth back there. I think going into the season, they have more reliable arms in the bullpen currently healthy right now and that's the argument of why they should add more not everybody's going to be healthy the flip side of not adding so relievers who are out there right now the best relievers the best i think relievers left on the market are mostly left-handed you have michael fulmer remaining on the market and for whatever reason he's not a twin i don't know what's going on but I, maybe they don't like michael fulmer or maybe he's asking too much or maybe it's a combo of both i figure because Nobody else has signed him. He's asking for a multi-year deal. We'll see if he ends up in Minnesota. But after Fulmer, the best relievers, I think, are left-handed. You have Matt Moore, Andrew Chafin, Zach Britton, left-handed relievers. And then you get into the righties who are higher upside, like Alex Reyes and Chad Green just signed with the Blue Jays. And the first half of that's going to be Tommy John. That's kind of the, the department we're in here this late in the offseason with relievers there's good relievers left but a majority of them are left-handed so if the twins were to go out and i'm fine you know if they signed andrew chafin who's one of the better left-handed relievers in the league if they were to sign him i'm okay with that but the flip side of it is the opportunity cost of not giving giovanni moran that opportunity to be your second left-handed reliever in the bullpen and letting him grow because he was so solid down the stretch in more of a mop-up role but he was solid down the stretch for the twins so you have to consider that with any addition. If you add Michael Fulmer, is it counterproductive to add Michael Fulmer? And because he's a veteran right-handed reliever, you have him pitching higher leverage innings than Griffin Jacks. I would argue no. And I like Michael Fulmer, but I really like Griffin Jacks. And I think they should use Griffin Jacks in the seventh and eighth inning in 2023. If you add Fulmer, now you got Duran, Fulmer, and Lopez back there. And I think Fulmer is going to jump Jacks in the hierarchy because of the right-handed veteran reliever tag on his on his locker. But maybe not. Maybe they add him and they say you're exclusively, you know, sixth or seventh inning guy. It's hard for me to see that because they deployed him later in 2022, later in games. You have to consider those things. Do I think it's good to have Michael Fulmer getting higher leverage innings right out of the gate over Griffin Jacks? No, I don't think so. But I, it can't hurt to have depth. So I'm I'm on board with bringing back Fulmer. Uh, I'm on board with bringing in a left-handed reliever. But generally, my belief is with left-handed relievers, unless they have splits that are more even, like Giovanni Moran, 
you're hoping he can get righties and lefties out, but he has reverse splits in the minors. Many of his minor league seasons were reversed where he's better against right-handed hitters, even though he's a left-handed pitcher like Johan Santana with the changeup. If you're not, if you don't have those type of splits, your utility is less with the three batter minimum. Like I just don't, I think a a left-handed reliever in the bullpen who can't get righties out very well. I think the twins decided with Taylor Rogers, his value was lower. I think that was part of it. I think part of it was Rogers splits were becoming stark. Like he was, he's awesome against lefties. He was awesome against lefties last year, but his numbers were terrible because righties just teed off. And if you have a Taylor Rogers type in your bullpen with a three batter minimum, it's harder to deploy them because they're going to have to see right-handed hitters with the loogie, the left-handed one out guy back in the day, three years ago, four years ago, you could bring out Rogers to face one left-handed hitter and then he's done and you burn him and he's, that's it. In today's bullpen, you got to get righties and lefties out. You got to have guys who can get both out. You have to have more guys who can get both out than you do just left-handed one out guys or right-handed one out guys. And Michael Fulmer is absolutely a right-handed pitcher who can only really get right-handed hitters out. His numbers last year, insane. Super tough on righties, super tough, which I like, but he doesn't have much utility. If it goes right, left, right, he was bad enough last year against lefties where you're concerned that lefty in the middle is going to hit a home run. <laughs> you're thinking that he probably will. That's that's the problem I have. Like I believe Griffin Jacks can get righties and lefties out. I believe Giovanni Moran can get righties and lefties out. So if you're going to bring somebody in, you're going to bring somebody in, they have to be better than those two in my opinion if they're going to jump them in the in the leverage category never hurts to add depth twins could add depth to this bullpen but i think they're in a pretty good spot if you were to put my confidence level and i've been more confident on the twins bullpen in recent years when i shouldn't have been because it's been their biggest problem i would argue if 10 was i think this is the best bullpen ever created and zero is this bullpen looks like a repeat of the first half of 2022 which I don't think is going to happen. I think that's hard to repeat to blow the games Pagan did against Cleveland over and over and over. I would put myself at a six, maybe a six and a half. I'm warm. Like I think it's above average. I think with the upside and there's enough floor, there's enough floor to me where it's not like, Oh, this, if this all clicks, it's great. But if it doesn't, it's going to be horrible. Joe Andron, if healthy, he's a floor, his stuff matches, you know, everything matches. You Chandran was not a one-year wonder by any means. Griffin Jacks, I think, provides a floor. I think Caleb Thielbar provides a floor. I think Jorge Lopez, in some ways, provides a floor. But the upside there is what makes it a six and not like a three or a four, where I'm just kind of tepid about it. The upside makes it a six, because if you do have a healthy Duran, if you do have all-star closer Jorge Lopez with his 254 ERA closing games or pitching in the eighth inning, you do get a step forward from Griffin Jacks. Caleb Thielbar just is himself from the second half last year. Jorge Alcala comes back healthy as a good middle reliever. Giovanni Moran continues his ascension into high relief innings. And then Emilio Pagan and Trevor McGill provide quality, you know, fifth or sixth inning level innings. Then it's going to work and it's going to look really nice and it's going to be a strength for the Twins in 2023. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, like, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at NashWalker9. Follow the show at Lockdown Twins. Dick Bramer came on Tuesday. I'm curious what you guys thought. If you if you liked it, you leave a comment for Dick. I don't know if he's looking, but if he is, I want him to see that you liked it. Dick was great. If you haven't listened to that, uh, talked about Correa and Maurer and Morneau in the booth and arise and pablo lopez so many things in in a short amount of time and i think i think you will enjoy it if you haven't listened already again thank you so much always i think we have 15 more episodes with me as host in february which it makes me emotional to think about because this show has been my baby and and i've gotten so much support through the show and i've grown so much through it and getting comfortable on camera getting comfortable in front of the mic and getting comfortable talking about the twins and I couldn't have done it without everybody listening. And I I hope you finish strong with me. And I hope you enjoy the next host as well. <laughs> well as we get closer, uh, maybe I'll look back on some of my favorite moments as host in Twins lore of the last couple of years. Thank you so much. 
for making Locked On Twins your first listen. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, and go Twins.